Bill's gift tonight, Bobcat Goldsway. Position heat, Dr. James Garbarino and Los Angeles citizen Shirley Smith. Thank you so much. God love you. Thank you. Thank you. What a crowd. I tell you, and I know why they're in a good mood. Uh, they reported today that NATO had its best bombing day yet in the war. Um, well, <laughs> but not for the people on the ground, the best. But, hey, they're supporting a genocidal regime. They deserve a few bombs. And, yes, they said they bombed. They hit uh, five MiG-21 uh, airplanes, knocked out those. We hit five airfields, destroyed eight bridges. Uh, unfortunately, one was the Golden Gate. But, you know, <laughs> we're... We, we, we do occasionally miss, uh, I know, we miss, uh, now, what a, what a turbulent day in the world of world leaders. Robert Rubin quit as our uh, Treasury Secretary over in Russia. Yeltsin fired his Prime Minister, Primakov, and his impeachment. You know they're trying to impeach Yeltsin now? The charges against Yeltsin are, they're, they're charging him with the, the instigation of the Soviet collapse and also genocide against the Russian people because the economy is so bad over there. Yeltsin, not worried. He says these are the kind of bogus impeachment charges you get hit with uh, when you're too drunk to have improper sex. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, Bill Clinton was in Atlanta, and uh, <clears throat> he, uh, he was. He was in Atlanta yesterday. He invoked. Boris Yeltsin. He was at a meat market. Don't make your own joke. <laughs> he was at a real meat market. I don't know what he was doing there, but he was at one, and he told this story about how Boris Yeltsin, apparently a true story, he said Boris Yeltsin once offered him a roasted pig. I guess they were in Russia, or, or Arkansas. I don't know. <laughs> and cut off the ear of the pig and invited Clinton to eat it. Clinton said he was nonplussed. He said to Yeltsin, maybe you haven't read the papers in the last year, but uh, if anybody knows about taking a pig by the ears. <laughs> I did the president. I did the president. Now, back, <laughs> back at the White House, more problems with China. They're still mad at us for blowing up their embassy. I can understand that. Well, they got so many emails protesting at the White House website. I didn't even know the White House had a website uh, that, it cra that it shut down. It destroyed the whole website. Uh, all this kind of protesting the Chinese are doing, and they're trying to do it in every way possible. In fact, today, Al Gore uh, got so many illegal campaign co contributions all in pennies. And that... <laughs> and... And finally, I did want to mention that tonight was uh, the last night for The Nanny. It aired the final episode. Are you fans of The Nanny? Great final episode. And then in the last two minutes, uh, Bob Newhart wakes up <laughs> and finds that the whole thing was a dream uh, caused by the guy next door uh, using a bandsaw to cut galvanized tin. <laughs> well, that's right. But lead off. Uh, Panel. First, our citizen panelist watches us on KABC right here in L.A. You can see her. You can see how we chose her on the web at abc.com slash ci. Please welcome Shirley Smith. Shirley. <laughs> hey, I'm glad you got here. Oh, thank, thank you. you. His book is Lost, Lost Boys, Why Our Sons Turn Violent and How We Can Save Them. Dr. James Gabarino. Dr. Gabarino. Hey, Doc. Nice to meet you. She is one of the chairwomen of Feminist for Life and one of the five fine stories of Everybody Loves Raymond Patricia Heaton. Yeah. Hey, you. Thank you for coming. Oh, yeah. Good to be here. Oh, that's yours. And finally, he'll be at the comic strip in El Paso, May 21st and 22nd, at the Improv in Brea, don't laugh, the 27th through the 30th, Mr. Bobcat Goldthwaite over here. Oh, <laughs> you always look ridiculous. <laughs> in one way or another, but it's always different. It's a different ridiculous. I'm well, glad you had him on, yeah. too, Bill, because I really have always wanted to know how you're raising your kids. 
How am I rated? Uh, I want to know your big tip. Well, um, uh, let, don't talk. Because plant grower. That, 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 because that segs perfectly into our first okay. issue. That's Thank you I'm very much. I should, I should bribe you for that. Anyway, uh, we want to talk about kids because it was uh, recently revealed. Now, the new stuff is coming out about how these kids in the Colorado shootings were raised and what their parents did. Janet Reno suggested that the parents might be criminally responsible for what they did. It was reported today that uh, both Eric Harris and Dylan Siebold were, uh, their parents were warned by an English teacher that they had written disturbing papers that they had turned in that included violence, uh, shootings, and split infinitives. So they were in hot water with the teachers. And, uh, and of course, you know, that, that we also know that they brought the parents, brought Eric Harris to therapy. He was on antidepressants. Well, that shows that the parents are trying to do something. Well, that's yeah. well I mean, but it but shows that the parents didn't do enough. Because if the parents had been done enough, Littleton would not be with us. I think parents have a responsibility not just to themselves and to their children and to their extended family, but to society. So you would hold those parents responsible? I would hold those parents responsible. For anything kids do? Listen, up until the time that they're 18. I'm just hey, they belong to us. We brought them here. It's our responsibility to interpret life to our kids and prepare but them to get out there. Can't feel bad even with good parents? Well, but who's to say they were good parents? See, there's no measure. Every parent that's would go, I, I've done well. But that's but why that I think you can't, it's hard. What, you know, rule of standard are you going to use to determine who is a good parent and how they can be responsible? Well, you know how that's like mob, but unless it's know. like mob bark or this handing is, the guys the gun have, and saying, go around the bank. In every state so. we have standards about neglect and supervision. Right, so they're already And at the bottom line, the minimal level we do, but... I think anybody ought to recognize that there are influences beyond the family that make it much more difficult or dangerous to be a parent but today. And you could get away. But they may be dangerous and they may be difficult, but the more dangerous and the more difficult they become, the bigger our job is. We can't go, oh my God, society's crazy, but you so I can't you don't do anything with them. Any, but Shirley, you don't think there's any case where a good parent does the job and the kid is still rotten because a kid sometimes can just be a bad seed. Yeah, no, I, uh, I don't believe that. Look at him. <laughs> no, you had good parents. parents. We might find out that they created what we've got here. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> what, me? <laughs> I'm as bad as... You me, I'm as bad as... Uh, whatever. <laughs> You're being heckled by someone not in show business. Uh, I'm, I'm just here to plug a gig in El Paso, man. I don't know. Oh, good. I'm the poster child for... Bad parenting. <laughs> well, you know, Bill, look, you know, I worked at uh, Father Flanagan's Boys Town for a number you did of years. What? I worked at Boys oh, Town, Father Town. Flanagan's Boys Town, and well, he, he understood boys, and he said, you know, there is never, there's no such thing Most as a bad boy. Oh, boys. Bill, Ooh. you are so lame on that topic. Did you see well, 60 Minutes yeah. Sunday? Yes. Okay. Who lame on that topic? Like, that didn't happen. Right. Like, that doesn't it's happen all the time. Happen, but I'm the, not, yeah. Well, I'm not saying did all three are touching boys, but come on. Get off the topic, sir. It's on Catholic Church, not the little boys. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, that, the you early know, church has a hush fund to shut this up. Like when, it, when, a, exactly. when they have a funny priest, as Ann Landers would say. So that, that to ignore yeah. that the problem uh, happens because it's your faith no, is crazy. Well, yeah. molestation isn't the only thing that happens to boys or girls in life. You know, right. there are other issues that put them on a bad track. But once again, see, I, I'm just on parents because your kid does not go bad on his 14th birthday. You know, the cat is a... Candles are on the cake. He blows them out the tomorrow. He's crazy. Yeah, Look, are, you have kids. a responsibility. You're supposed right. to be watching that kid as it grows. You're not just yeah. supposed to be reporting when it gets its little shots at the pediatrician. You're supposed to know its behavior. But and then it comes with our seek help. There are kids who are very difficult to take care of from an early period. Right. And a lot of parents skate through because they have easy They're children. They're in denial. But they may be doing the best they can. But the child is really difficult to raise. And in this society, to have a difficult child and to have a kind of mediocre parent is a bad recipe. Because you know once they walk out the door, okay, there's, lot, there's lots of help. cut you off. We'll come back oh, to this. We've got to take a commercial. Okay. <laughs> Okay, we're talking about exactly how responsible parents should be for whatever their uh, kids do. And, you know, surely I'm always on the side of more responsibility. I get called a grouchy conservative all the time for taking that stand. But I also know...
parents who were good who just had rotten kids. And I also remember from my own childhood, it is so easy to lie to and fool your parents. Listen, it is our responsibility to be on the job. Of course they're going to lie if they can get away with it. It's our job to catch them in the lie and go, you're not going to get away with lying to me. But if you simply put the... This is all like Give really simple... Co -host, co look, this is really simple, good common sense. I could not understand Bill Clinton having a conference on youth violence. Yes, he did. This was his push. I want to know where the parents are when their kids are building bombs. I want to know where the parents are when what the are you kids... What are in that room? <laughs> I believe in an open door policy. I encourage all my daughters to keep diaries. Yeah, well, all because... So you would read the well, diary? They, they make up for this show. I would I, read my kids' diary. Look, you read the diary? You, read not, you never say to them, That's by the way, I do. see you went out with George and I told you not to. What you know is, she's apt to disobey and go out with whatever guy she wants, so I need to change my tactic a little bit. Yeah, there's one thing to preach no about privacy. parental responsibility, and everybody, everybody, who could disagree that parents have to be more observant? But we have to recognize the fact that there are going to be parents who aren't observant, who aren't vigilant, who don't do the job. And that means we have to look for other places to make sure they're bearing their share of the responsibility. For example, people make a lot of money out of marketing dangerous video games to kids, knowing that some kids are going to misuse them. They make, they make money marketing well, vicious videos. Video game. I mean, well, the, the point of the video games is they train kids yes, how to kill. Right. And okay. they're not being, the kids are not being protected I, from them. I say video games aren't violent enough. <laughs> I say, <laughs> video people uh, who are prone to violence, if they got to stay home and have violent, and they go, oh, then they wouldn't have to go no, out and kill people for real. Know, Michael Carneal, <laughs> no, that's, that's exactly wrong. That's why exactly did, wrong. Why did exactly Clinton wrong. invite you all that time? That's exactly right. Exactly. The, boy in, the boy in Paducah, Kentucky, had never fired a real gun. Right. He had 3,000 hours of practice on a video gun. He walked into his school, he shot 21 times, he hit 19 kids. Nobody could be that good without the kind of practice he got from a video game. And there's no yeah. protection for vulnerable kids, but troubled to, kids, from having access to them. as long as we keep focusing on these um, issues that are outside right. of the home, yeah. you know, like bad music, bad movies, right. bad video games, I say, you know, if parents spend more time with their kids doing things and that are family-oriented, <clears throat> I just cannot believe the kids can be as wayward the as they're allowed I to mean, be. I mean, not to bring up the Catholic thing again, but none of these shootings ever happened at a Catholic school, and yes. I know why. Because no one would dare cross a nun. Well, I... Well, <laughs> no one would... I'm not kidding, right? I mean, I remember the nun. Well, because uh, you don't know what they're packing under the rope. You know, they, they have, like, a habit there. Uh, just... So why, if President Clinton is so worried about this, why doesn't he provide school vouchers so that people who live in dangerous areas of bad high schools can get their kid into a parochial well, school? Well, that's a Republican idea. Ideas. He will get around to stealing it. We will take a break. <laughs> we'll be right back. Okay, one of the other reasons people have uh, blamed on this uh, horrible shooting and the other ones is the lack of spirituality. And, uh, you know, this issue comes up often with the Boy Scouts that again recently the ACLU is suing the city of Chicago because they let the Boy Scouts use the high school and the Boy Scouts have an oath to God. Of course they're Boy Scouts. They're Boy Scouts. They're dorks. Of course they're, they're squares. That's what they are. And of course the ACLU, a bunch of liberal know-it-alls, and I'm glad they exist because we need them to, but isn't it silly? I mean, couldn't we just let the Boy Scouts be dorks who help old ladies across the street and be squares and be themselves. You need them. Bill, you know, I've been interviewing boys who kill for a number of years, and I really? think the spiritual <laughs> emptiness thing is really important. Are you starting a gang? <laughs> no, I sit down with boys in prison to understand how they get to that point, and I think that there is a spiritual emptiness to them, but you have to understand, religion always speaks with two, voice, two voices. There's the voice that is of the voice of love and reverence for life and acceptance. That's the voice that makes a difference. But there's also the voice of punishment and judgment, and the research shows that makes things worse. Well, and those so, fellows in Littleton seem to me to be all about the voice of hate yes. and all about the voice of revenge and all about the voice of punishment. The whole religion. town is extremely religious. And the thing that troubles me about religion 
there's so many people who are very religious, are so right, uh, well, to the right, but also very, I'm right and you're wrong, right. us and them, and that's all I heard from every Littleton parent is, I think this could never change, happen here. Really. I think so outside of change? L.A. and New York, most Americans, and it's known, are religious people. So when you say it happened in a very religious town, well, most well, towns outside of where we live are religious towns. No, so that's kind of not to the degree that Colorado is, and not to the degree that you have these people come on television and have no qualms about saying, how could this happen to us? I mean, I when did you hear somebody in South Central, listen, I think South, South, Central, South Central, Central folks religion. go to church twice on Sunday, okay? Mm -hmm. I call that religious. They go to church right. twice yeah. on Sunday and they go mm -hmm. back on Tuesday night. And I know I don't live in South Central, but I live behind a Baptist church, okay? You know, Tuesday, all, all of these boys. So when we're talking about religion, these people put it together with hate. And mean? along with that, they all say well, it couldn't happen here. What do you mean it's more to do with suburbia, though? I think because people think because they live in a nice, clean city yeah. and everyone um, acts nice and it's a small town and they all know each other, that somehow there's less human evil operating there than there is in L.A. But I, I feel like... Right. Yeah. Right? I think in, in, some, in some ways, because I live here, I'm just very conscious of the bad stuff that goes on and what I need to protect my kids from and what I want to do. People right. who live in areas like that just think everything But you is know fine. you live among evil. But, but right. right. You're here they, in L.A. Yeah. yeah. Right. But you live well, behind the Baptist church. <laughs> she lives next to the CAA building. I mean, you figure it out. I mean, no, but I think this is back it me exists up, lady. everywhere, but people think if you have a nice house and drive a nice car right. that somehow everything and is And you're leaving out one important ingredient, that you're white and that you're middle class. Right, and so that so that, okay. is that, that is a key ingredient when you look at Littleton. It couldn't happen here. Have you right. ever right. seen a South Central mother interviewed when her son got shot in the drive-by to say, I can not believe how could this happen here? It's a good point, really, yeah. because, <laughs> you know, sure. because you know, there was a, a massacre in one day in Littleton, mm -hmm. but there has been a long, slow massacre going on mm -hmm. in neighborhoods all around the country that claims each week two or three times yeah. as many kids. And Quentin never spent any and, money for the it, funeral. And it's now... It's time to understand the connection between the two. The other thing is, is, though, that these boys who kill, you know, they don't think they're doing wrong. They have a sense of righteousness. They think they're doing right. They're paying people back. They're getting revenge. We ought to understand that it's that combination. If you think you're so righteous that you can do anything, whether it's bombing Serbia or it's killing people who are mean to you. Wait a minute. We're bombing Serbia for a reason. It's Every, not for fun. Everybody, sir. everybody kills for a reason. Everybody kills for a reason. Everybody. But you don't consider genocide a good reason. You don't consider what he is doing to the population there a good reason to stop him with force. And you write books. I think that when you open the door, I think his parents should have been door. better parents. Oh. And we never would have had this genocide. Milosevic. Yeah. Milosevic's parents both killed themselves. Well, did you know did, that? Did they really? Absolutely. Yeah. They were both suicides. Yes. He had a terrible childhood, and we should wow, hug him. Think, we should every hug him. Twice we go, we get right back to parent responsibility. Right. And when we hate other groups, it's because our parents, more than likely, did not teach us that all groups well, are bona fide and evil kids. There are evil kids. Yes. Where are they? Like, they, they? No? No, there is no. no. I believe I saw this we call problem kids. child. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. And yeah. it's kind I of have, too bad. Yeah, I right. Have, I have a seven year old. Yes. She was a foster child. When they placed this child with me, they told me this child was so uh, learning disabled, she would never be able to do X, Y, or Z. She was a multitude of problems. Now, it was not my job to accept that as she'll never function. Shirley, I have to take a break. I'm assuming no, that can't. this is a great end to that story. We'll have to come back to it in a second. Okay, Shirley, very quickly, what happened to your daughter? I'm guess good. She's seven and she's doing very well. There you go. <laughs> oh, please. So she's had time and resources. Well, what I thought she was going to be Rosie O'Donnell or something. I thought <laughs> that was going to be payoff. She's only seven. She will be at 27. All right, right. all right. All right. Respect and tenderness. Right. right, and you are a great parent. If oh. everybody could be like you. Oh. No, I'm telling you, you, you're my girl. I oh, wish I had hey. you with your voice oh. and the responsibility. Next week, we're in London. London next week. Tomorrow we're going to have Jennifer Tilly, Elaine Booster, Rabbi Stephen Leader, and Greg Jolly of the Afghan Whigs.